tattoo letters. <laughs> oh, there's gonna be tattoo ink everywhere. Hey guys, welcome back to Sage and Stone Homestead. My name is Heather and today I have a little bit of maintenance to do with some of the baby goats. This little girl and her half sister are going to their new family this week and I need to tattoo them. Goodness, you can't leave. I also need to trim their hooves and I've got a little boy that I need to disbud. I'll be doing the figure eight disbudding method and we're gonna talk a little bit about castration. So this little girl right here, I believe her new family named her Lily. I know both girls are Lily and Rose. I just can't remember who is who, but I think this is Lily and she is eight weeks old and she's never had her hooves trimmed. So at the moment, this is the situation with her hooves. The outside is growing over the hoof pad there. There's a little bit of dirt stuck in there. I wanna be able to make her feet nice and pretty. She's not happy about this situation today, are you? So I like to use, for my bigger goats, this milk stand. I put them in the head catch and I trim their hooves while they're eating a snack. The little babies, especially the pulled ones or the ones without horns, they do not fit in my head catch. So I have to hold them and do their feet. And it's pretty simple. Essentially what I'm looking to do is to trim off the outside parts of the hoof, the parts that grow over the middle, and make them flush with the hoof pad. Here's what it looks like afterwards. We're trying to get this look on all four feet. The front feet are a lot easier to get than the back feet on babies. You're okay. You are. You're fine. They always hate, hate their first few hoof trims. But that is done, and when she needs it again in a couple months, she should easily fit in a head catch like that. So, are you ready for your tattoo? You're gonna hate that worse. Okay. So this here is my disbudding box. It's gonna be able to hold her still while I do her tattoo. I actually have an old sweatshirt stuffed down in here from when I was disbudding a smaller goat and we'll have to stuff that back in there again later. But she's big so she doesn't need it. Okay. Here we are, friend. So she's nice and snug in here. She's not gonna like what I am about to do, but when you have registered goats, they come with papers. And her papers have her name and her assigned tattoo, as well as information about her color and who owns her and her lineage. So in order for her to be connected to those papers, she has to have the matching tattoo. The way that the goat tattoos work is on their right ear, is the farm tattoo. So right now we're registering our Nigerians with AGS and our herd tattoo is SNS1. That's going to go in her right ear. And in her left ear, I'm going to put the tattoo that signifies the year in which she was born and her kid number. So she was our seventh registered kid born on our farm in 2022. So her tattoo is actually P7. The P is for the year 2022 and the seven is, you know, she's the seventh registered kid. This is just an alcohol prep pad here. Their ears are nasty. Isn't that gross? So I've got the tattoo letters loaded in here. And in order to make sure that they're gonna look right once they're punched in, I'm gonna do a test punch on this card here. SNS1. That is exactly what I'm looking to put in her right ear. So this is the right ear. These tattoo letters are made with little needles that are basically going to just punch little holes into her <laughs> ear. And then I will fill those holes in with ink after it's done. Inside their ear, there's two veins, and I want to try to get the tattoo in between those two veins so she has minimal bleeding. There. See? Got the little holes. Now there is a little bit of bleeding coming out of the back of her ear, and in theory, from what I've been told, if you have a little bit of bleeding, it means you got a good punch. So, got some green tattoo ink. <laughs> okay, for her left ear, she's P7. So yes, P7 for her. P7 
test punch works well. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Shh. Good girl. Ah! All right. There. There. I know. So she's going to go back in with Mama, and this ink will wear off on its own over the next few days or next week or so, but it will remain inside those little puncture marks and give her a pretty permanent tattoo. Sometimes they'll fade over time, but from what I've read, the green ink tends to stay the longest. You ready to go back? Okay. So this chunker, we're gonna do the exact same thing with her, but I kind of wonder if she's a little bit too big to fit in my box. We'll have to see. to go a little bit too deep or you can get the quick, um, it's usually not a catastrophic bleeding event. Um, I actually thought maybe they would spurt blood, but they don't. It's like it just kind of seeps out or oozes out of their hoof pad and it's not usually a big deal. You can put cornstarch on it or there's a product called Blood Stop Powder. I haven't done that ever because usually it's not that bad. You just take off a little bit at a time. We hoof trim every two months. You could trim more often and you just take a little bit less off. Sometimes when you're first starting out, taking a little bit at a time versus a lot all at once is just more comfortable. Okay. Shall we see if you fit in that box? I have my doubts. She's huge. <laughs> oh, she's gonna get in here. We squoze her in. So a lot of people have two sets of these pliers. One set will always have their herd tattoo loaded because that never changes. And then the other set, they'll be able to switch out for the year and the kid number. with an automatic ear release attachment on it so you don't have to just peel the ear off of the points. It is kind of something I wish I had invested in. So like I mentioned before, I do have a little baby that I'm going to disbud today while I've got the kid box out. And I need to let this disbudding iron heat up for at least a good 10 minutes. The end of this iron here gets very, very hot. So hot that it causes them a little bit of discomfort, but the nerves and things burn off so quickly that really the only thing they complain about is being restrained in that box. They hate it. So this little dude, he's not the one that we are disbudding today. He's actually pulled, which means he's naturally hornless and does not need any kind of disbudding. I do need to handle his feet today, but he's one that I actually just put a castration band on and I figured we would check on that with you. So everything looks like it's going as planned. As I mentioned before, he is eight weeks old and that is the absolute youngest that you would want to band any boy. They need time for their urethra to develop because banding them young, it really could make their urethra get a narrow spot on it because of the scar tissue. And that could present a problem later if they ever experience bladder stones or urinary calculi. Those bladder stones can get stuck in that narrowing and that would be a death sentence. 
Ideally, I would have waited until he was 16 weeks old to do his castration. But because we're in the middle of breeding season, I don't really have an extra pasture to put him in to reach that age. Oh, I've got tattoo ink all over these. Oh, there's gonna be tattoo ink everywhere. Male goats are fertile and can breed as young as eight weeks old. He's in here with a bunch of sisters and half sisters and aunts and mommies and I don't need him breeding one of his close family members like that. And again, because I had nowhere else to put him, he has to get castrated as young as possible. Our weather, Tumnus, he lives with our buck, Havoc. He was actually castrated at eight weeks old and he's coming up on age three. And so far, it doesn't seem like his castration at that young age has caused him any issues. Okay, can you, ugh, he's stiff as a board. I gotta do your feet. We do have experience with urinary calculi on our farm. Unfortunately, it was an intact buck that died and that was a really sad situation. So it doesn't only happen to weathers. And for that, I think nutrition plays a huge role. So remember, they need a two to one calcium to phosphorus ratio if you give them grain at all. You're done. So his banding looks really good and in around five to six weeks, everything down there should just dry up and fall off. But really at this point, the banding has done its job. He cannot breed. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. I'm actually gonna be using the figure eight disbudding method. And what that is, it's basically two burns on each horn bud, a little bit offset, just so you can ensure that you're getting the full horn bud. The way that little bucks are made is their horn is in a little bit of a triangle. And this horn tip right here, this ridge, I'll be able to show you what I'm talking about on one of our goat skulls that we have. This ridge is sometimes missed or little bits of that horn tissue can be missed when they're babies. And that little tiny bit of tissue can actually grow into some pretty large and debilitating scurs when the goats are older. And I actually have an example of some big scurs on our buck Hamish. And I'm gonna be pulling him in here and checking on those scurs as soon as we're done with baby boy here. So my iron is red hot. I'm not sure if it's coming up on camera, but I'm gonna test it out right here on the wood. Lots of smoke, a nice black ring here, and we're good to go. I'm gonna wanna make sure that I protect his ear. I don't wanna burn his ear at all. And a lot of people will shave their heads. I find that it isn't really necessary. I can pretty much feel an eyeball where it's at and get a good shot on it. So his horn bud is right in here. And I gotta back up because my cord is not long enough. Now that the initial disbudding is done, I'm gonna go back over him a second time and I'm gonna offset the disbudding. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm placing my ring a little bit further in towards his nose and angled down. So I want the top part of the ring to cross over the center of that disbudding that we've already done. So we're gonna go again over this side. I'm gonna angle the iron a little bit more inward and down towards his nose and make sure that I am crossing over that, that first disbudding in here. All right. I think your mama wants you. You ready to go see her? She's more than ready. 
I know, buddy. This here is Titus. He had the figure eight disc budding done a little bit less than two weeks ago. And you can still see his little scars here. It takes around two months for the skin and the hair to grow over that spot. Sometimes you'll see the scab lifting off and falling off with a little tiny bit of blood. And as needed, I will spray something like Alu Shield or a blue coat on the area to help keep infection away. I do have a short video on why we disbud. You've probably noticed that we have some goats with horns and some goats without horns. And we have decided to disbud all of our dairy goats here on our farm. I'll make sure to link that video at the end of this one. But right now we need to go get Hamish because we need to check his horn skurs. Remember how this works? Hamish as a baby and when he first came home he actually looked like he had only one skur on one side and it seemed paper thin at the time. It seemed like it wasn't going to be any kind of issue and he would be able to knock it off while he was sparring with the other goats but they've actually gotten quite sizable in the you know nine months that he's been here and uh I need to make sure that they're not be gonna be causing problems because they are, as you can see, they're growing backwards and I don't want them to grow backwards into his head and cause any issues there. So I need to take my hoof trimmers and trim these down a little bit. There might be a tiny bit of blood, but I'm gonna try to not take like whole huge big chunks off, just enough to make him comfortable. So I used to be able to trim his horn skirts, and they're so thick now that I can't. I really do need to keep a close eye on those things. So skirts really can be a pain in the butt. Big horns on a big goat can be very dangerous. And so I kind of wish that I had taken care of his little skirt when he was a baby, but I didn't know what I was doing at that point. Well, I've got ink all over my hands, but it was a productive day here in the barn. As promised, here is the video where I talk about why we are choosing to disbud now and we didn't before. So go ahead and give that a click if you're interested and we'll see you next time.